today we are talking about emergency neurology it is a very important topic that all of you should know every point in this lecture someone may say I'll not be a neurologist even if you are not a neurologist or are you are not hoping to be a neurologist you may or you must in faces with cases like this in the emergency unit I am Professor Wael Gamal I'm specialized in the endurology and in the storm field, but I have to know the emergency. I am the chairman of the endurology section at the Egyptian Neurological Association. I am also board member in the EOLIS. EOLIS is the European section of urolithiasis. I am also board member in the International Alliance of Urolithiasis. Why I, I tell you uh, all about my position because all of you must know you have to have a position in the societies in your specialty whatever this machine what is the definition of emergency emergency arises when a condition requires rapid diagnosis and immediate treatment uh, the patient may ask you to postpone him till the uh, next day or after a few days you have to refer this patient for immediate management. We divide the lecture into two main categories non genital, including hematuria, renal colic, urinary retention, infection, acute renal failure, trauma. And the genital one, including phimosis, paraphimosis, priapism, benign fracture, and acute scrotum. Mm -hmm. Talking about hematuria means the blood and urine you have to differentiate between different types of hematuria either macroscopic that's seen by uh, by the patient himself it is either gross hematuria or frank hematuria microscopic that need microscopic examination which means that the hematuria is mild very important you have to know that the hematuria is painless or painful for those for uh, for those with painless hematuria, it is very important in all the age to maybe malignancy. For those with painful hematuria, we are thinking about something like stones. There's something associated with pain. Also, you have to know that initial hematuria may be related to the urethral pathology. Maybe terminal hematuria it is very important in cases of pilar disease. Maybe total hematuria, not initial, not terminal, but it is a total mean there is a pathology that causes hematuria, total hematuria. Hematuria may be due to medical cause, something in the kidney, or urological cause that's called surgical hematuria. Medical cause very important in case of glomerular or non-glomerular, like those with interstitial nephrites, glomerular nephrites, when you, you I think you, uh, you studied this issue in the in the last year in the pediatric department when you know, they are talking about glomerular frights. So when a child is coming to you with still like urine, you know, it's called hematuria. You have to think in glomerular nephrites. The urological cause, like tumor, prostate, stone, trauma, tumor, all case, all these points should be investigated very important when talking about medical cause of hematuria it's mainly or mostly it's associated with what's called RBC's cast very important also may be associated with proteinuria getting a case of hematuria the patient usually present to the hematuria the hematuria is alarming for a patient at the presentation Maybe it, will, it may be massive hematuria associated with urinary retention. Maybe the hematuria due to renal cause associated with renal colic. How to, for, how to uh, diagnose or proceed with cases like this? First of all, you have to know the history of drug intake. You have to ensure that it is a hematuria. It is not a concentrated urine, uh, dark urine. You have to do urine analysis. You have to do lab investigation for bleeding. You have to go for radiology like CT, and even if this nothing is diagnosed, you have to go for even cystoscope or flexible urethroscope. And all of, all of you know the treatment is the treatment of the cause according to the diagnosis. 
point in, in emergency in the non-genital the renal colic. Very important and anyone in, uh, in uh, emergency hospital should see cases like this. The commonest urological emergency. As I said, you have to see it at any place. The clinical picture, you have to know the clinical picture very well. Renal colic is a severe in nature. It is not like any pain, it is severe. How you know that it is severe? The patient should go to emergency hospital or should seeking for medical advice even in the midnight. It is severe in nature. It is mainly posterior. It is not anterior pain because the kidney is a retrogratinial structure. It is colic in nature. It is associated with other urological symptoms like hematuria, like stone passer, like previous stone operation. It is associated with other symptoms like GIT symptoms. symptoms. It is associated with vomiting. It is a very common association, the renal colic associated with vomiting. It is, male, it is sudden onset, sudden offset, of short duration. The patient responds to strong analgesia not responding to a wrist or any uh, uh, any other uh, line of simple treatment. Differential diagnosis, sometimes there is a stone in the iliac fossa and the in the lower third. There is different differential diagnosis between it and other ovarian pathology very important. Between the appendicitis very important the appendicitis the patient is calm, it's leaning forward the pain mainly anterior and when we did total leukocytic count the patient had leukocytosis sometimes there is differential diagnosis is diverticulitis or even the ectopic pregnancy how to diagnose by ultrasonography you will find that the kidney is obstructed when we do QB if the stone is radio big you will find the stone in the ureter or even in the kidney and the most and the, the best way to diagnose is the non-contrast CT because it can diagnose both radio peak and the radio lucent stone also can diagnose the degree of back pressure or any associated other pathology no place for intravenous urography during renal colic in cases of pregnancy is the only indication for MR urography because we cannot do CT for pregnancy or we can it's the best is the MR urography. What is the cause of renal colic? Mostly the cause of renal colic obstruction. The most common cause is obstruction by stone, sometimes sometimes obstruction by clots, maybe obstruction by any pathology in the blood are structured. All these are causes of, uh, of uh, renal colic. The management of renal colic, most of the most of the cases is treated at home. However, it's very important to know that some cases or in certain situations, the patient should admit it to the hospital, and this patient is need for intervention. Pain that failed to respond to medical treatment, you have to have a limit for medical treatment if the patient cannot tolerate the pain. So it is one of the indication of intervention. Any fever, you have you have to put in your mind. Any case with fever with obstructed kidney, it is an emergency and this patient is in need for intervention. Impaired renal function, either obstruction of a solitary kidney or bilateral obstructed kidney, this is an emergency. The medical treatment, if the patient is respond to medical treatment, you have to have a limit. The maximum allowed time for kidney to be obstructed, not more than four weeks. So, if you give a patient medical treatment for one week, two weeks, three weeks, and this stone is just progressing, but still the kidney obstruction in this situation, you have to uh, send the patient for intervention. The incubation student, like all of you, he uh, he will exam he will examine after one or two weeks. And he is from a remote area, doctor like me, professor like anyone. He had no time for medical treatment. So in all the situation, we you have to choose the intervention from the start.
it is the same management as we said it is different cause it is the treatment of the of the cause of this obstruction however in case of emergence in case of renal colic severe in case of fever in case of stone solitary kidney the the first line of treatment is to relieve the obstruction you have to put in your mind any obstructed system with the previous mentioned indications you have to relieve this obstruction either by insertion of a double g stent from below or insertion of percutaneous nephrostomy tube to relieve the obstruction then the patient will tolerate the pain and they get uh, a good general condition so go to for different treatment if it's stone ureter stone kidney whatever the cause you have to treat the cause Urinary retention it is very important emergency in neurology. We have two types of retention: acute retention and chronic retention. Acute retention is painful inability to avoid with full bladder. The cause of acute retention is very important. There is something infrathecal below the bladder. Either prosthetic abscess, stone posterior urethra, urethral trauma, urethral bleeding. Any pathology below the bladder can cause obstruction. The second cause is very important, and to all of you, you have to put it in your mind. You hear some patient in acute retention, the urethra is free, the blood, the, 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 there is no stone, the prostate is free. So, what is the cause? Don't forget the neurological cause. Sometimes there is neurological problem that the bladder cannot contract, like sacral nerve compression or reflex pain post operative for those like postpartum or post piles operation the patient did the pain and they cannot micturate although no infravesical obstruction very important i tell you something please don't forget it the transverse myelates in any case of acute retention there is without any infravesical pathology don't forget the, the transverse myelitis and refer the patient for the neurological doctor for neurological assessment. Manage, management of acute retention, as we said, when we said obstructed kidney or persistent to colic, relieve the obstruction. The same rule. If the urethra is healthy, you can insert a urethra catheter. If the urethra, there is a problem in the urethra, you have to insert a suprabubic tube. Just relieve the obstruction. Later on, treatment is the treatment of the cause. If there is a stone in the posterior ureter, you can do your thoroscopy. If there is prosthetic abscess, you can manage whatever the cause. You can manage the the cause of this obstruction after relief of retention. This obstruction develops slowly. It is not acute. The bladder is distended, stretched, very good radial over days or weeks. The patient, the bladder is full, and in clinical examination, you may find the bladder reach to the umbilicus. The bladder is containing three, two, or three liters of urine. The presentation of this patient, frequency, diurnal enuresis, and the diurnal and nocturnal enuresis, is very important to complain. Once you find the patient complaining of enuresis, whatever diurnal, diurnal, and the nocturnal, you have to put in your mind the chronic retention. When you examine the patient, you will find the bladder piriform cystic structure reaching to the umbilicus or even the, the fisternum. The etiology mostly is chronic infravesical obstruction. The most common cause of the chronic infravesical obstruction for those with penile prosthetic hyperplasia. Treatment, you have to drain this bladder, as we said in acute retention, either drain from below or drain suprabubicae according to the situation but the drainage here is different from case with acute retention you have to drain this bladder gradual if you drain this bladder very rapid or sudden decompression this will end it with severe hematuria so evacuation of the bladder in chronic retention should be done gradual decompression of the bladder infection infection is very important emergency in our department and I think you there is a uh, lectures in this issue you took it before although you t you you t you talk this chapter of infection but I have to stress in certain point Obst 
obstructed infected kidney. It is an emergency. Once you find a patient with a fever, kidney is obstructed, and the internal echoes by ultrasonography, you have to drain this kidney. The second point is the abscess. Either renal abscess is an emergency, prosthetic abscess is an emergency, scrotal or, or what's called testicular abscess is an emergency. Perinephric abscess is an emergency. Don't forget all this category as an emergency and the treatment is the treatment of the cause. Acute renal failure. It's a very important item, it's a very important issue to, to put in your mind the acute renal failure. Acute renal failure it is a rapid deterioration of the renal function over a period of hours or day, resulting in failure to maintain fluid and electrolyte hemostasis and to excrete nitrogenous waste products. It is characterized by progressive, very, very rapid, may be preceded by allegoria, and at the early stage, it is reversible. The chronic renal failure is slowly progressive chronic deterioration of the renal function and this will take several weeks. This is very important. It has three causes, either pre-renal cause, renal cause, or post-renal cause. The pre-renal cause is called prolonged hypovolemia. It is very important. It is due to severe hypotension. So if there is a bleeding, massive bleeding in any surgery, in female, during labor, during cesarean section, during any abdominal surgery, Massive bleeding means prolonged hypotension. So the anesthesia should put your eyes on the urine output. Prolonged hypotension will end it by renal shutdown and acute renal failure. Even in pediatric department, dehydration, ch child with severe vomiting, diarrhea, prolonged dehydration also may be ended by renal failure. The renal cause of renal failure due to acute extensive renal parenchyma disease, acute tubular necrosis, glomerular nephritis, they are very important. The renal cause in cases with predisposed cases like diabetes, like hypertension, this patient had pre-renal uh, the kidney is liable for trauma with, with massive analgesia, with prolonged analgesia administration. All this can lead to acute renal failure as a renal cause renal or what's called obstructive diuresis, this is our responsibility at the urological department. If there is bilateral urethral obstruction like bilateral urethral stone and the patient is anuric, no urine, periurethra, with empty bladder, we said acute retention, no urine periurethra with full bladder. Here the anuria is the obstruction at the level above the bladder, sobrafzygal obstruction. This is a very important. Or obstruction of a solitary kidney stone in a solitary kidney this will lead to acute renal failure it is an emergency and we are in need for rapid de de decompression of this kidney sometimes malignancy infiltrating both ureter sometimes post abdominal perineal surgery or gynecological or obstetric, obstetric surgery like cesarean but complicated cesarean is bleeding if they may like get the ureter bilateral all this situation can be ended with acute renal failure or obstetric the clinical presentation renal pain associated with renal pain is called or is renal colon volume overload and electrolyte disturbance that occur due to renal failure. This, means, this may be ended with multiple systemic manifestation, GIT manifestation, the patient complaining of anorexia, nausea, vomiting, respiratory manifestation, acidic breath, and if the main respiratory sign, maybe the patient may be associated with central nervous system irritability, disturbed conscious level, and even uremic coma. Cardiovascular manifestation like hypertension, generalized edema, congestive heart failure, and pulmonary edema. It's a very important manifestation for acute renal failure. Investigation for acute renal failure, urea and creatinine, very important. The cardinal feature of acute renal failure is decline in the glomerular filtration rate. In routine clinical practice, it is usually identified by a rise in serum, blood urea, and the creatinine level. Creatinine clearance measurement 
it's very important to assess the renal failure and it will be associated with hyperkalemia which is very dangerous and acidosis investigation including abdominal ultrasonography abdominal QB which is not it is only for the radiopic stone the main ministry for diagnosis of any obstruction or cause of obstruction is the CT urography as we said it can diagnose both radio opaque and the radiolucent stone does not need colonic preparation preparation it gives us idea about the kidney the other kidney the ureter the bladder give us the idea about the urinary tract but the the disadvantage is still still expensive when compared with the QB of acute renal failure very important there is indication for dialysis in case of pericarditis the change in irritability change in the mental status hyperkalemia acidotic breathing fluid overload and pulmonary edema all these are indication for dialysis as we said treatment is the treatment of the cause case of pre-renal prolonged hypertension prolonged breathing so you have to replace with blood transfusion in case of renal cause go for forced diuresis and aggressive fluid replication with diuretics loop diuretics as frosimide or osmotic diuretic like manitol if filled we, the patient may take uh, two or three sessions of dialysis for those with post renal cause if the patient general condition is bad like acidosis disturbed conscious level dialysis two or three sessions till improvement of the general condition if the general condition is got relief of the obstruction as we said with, timbr with a temporal minimally invasive maneuver passing either from below ureteral catheter or percutaneous nephrostomy then after the general condition and the the uh, and creatinine become normal go for treatment of the cause when, when we are talking about the urinary tract trauma it is either renal ureteral bladder or urethral renal injury the kidney relatively protected from traumatic injury so considerable degree of force is usually required to injure the kidney because the kidney is protected with a very nephric fat it is protected with the lower rib and the back muscle so it is mostly protected from each side the mechanic mechanism and the causes of injury blunt direct blow may be associated with fracture major trauma or may be associated with fracture rib acceleration deceleration road traffic accident falls from a height falls onto a flank or penetrating like knives or gunshot diagnosis it's very important if it says if there is a blunt trauma to the back major blunt trauma motor car accident penetrating wood the clinical presentation if there is a macroscopic hematuria microscopic more than five per high power field and the patient the hypotensive penetrating chest flank and abdominal wound all this situation in need for CT urography the actually we have to know that the abdominal ultrasonography all cases of urology examined by abdominal ultrasonography and cases of renal injury should go for contrast enhanced CT are the degree of renal trauma either grade one contusion microscopic or gross hematuriological studies normal or hematoma subcapsular not expanding without parenchymal restoration grade two hematoma non-expanding renal hematoma confined to the renal renal retroperitoneum or laceration less than one centimeter parenchymal depth of renal cortex without urinary extravasation grade 3 laceration more than one centimeter parenchymal depth of renal cortical without collect system rupture or urinary extravasation grade 4 laceration parenchymal laceration extending through the renal cortex medulla and the collecting system vascular main renal artery or vein injury with 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 contained hemorrhage last one grade 5 less laceration vascular complete shattered kidney or a version of the renal, renal hilum devascularizing the kidney these are the grade of the hematoma if the hematoma is closed and it is not extending to the pelvic cell system and the patient is stable may, most of the cases need just follow up if this shattered the grade 5 may be may, may need nephrectomy
most of the case, as we said, there is a protective mechanism for the kidney. Most of the case, uh, non-operative management in 98% of the really can be managed non-operative. Surgical exploration for grade 4 and the grade 5 more often require surgical exploration. If there is persistent bilirenal bleeding, expanding bilirenal hematoma, pulsatile bilirenal hematoma, penetrating trauma, it's very important, usually need exploration, but can be managed non-operatively if carefully staged with CT. The ureters are protected from external trauma by surrounding by surrounding bone structure, muscles, and the other organs. Very difficult that blunt trauma cause uh, injury to the ureter. They cause external trauma or internal trauma. This is the most external trauma intraoperative or internal trauma. It is a very common during your troscopy. It's very important. The most common cause of ureteral injury is iatrogenic. During your troscopy, there is a perforation, there is a, a ureter, uh, ureteral avulsion, whatever the type, but it's associated with ureteral trauma. Ureteric injury, as we said, external trauma is rare. It, it is a need for severe force, penetrating wound like knife or bullet wound to the abdomen, lower chest, uh, to damage the ureter as well as the other organ. Internal trauma, more common than the external during the surgery, hysterectomy or ophrectomy, sigmoid or uh, colectomy, cesarean section. Most of the ureter injured during this difficult surgery. The diagnosis of ureteric injury is required high index of suspicious, like uh, cases with uh, difficult cesarean, the cases of both the hysterectomy and the patient come with obstruction or urinary collection, you have to put in your mind the ureteral injury. You may discover it interoperatively uh, if, the, if the surgeon is alert and know this complication can occur in different situations, may be diagnosed interoperatively. Late, the urine is collected intra-abdominal and the patient may be presented with presence of urine in the peritoneal cavity seen by ultrasonography and the patient presented with alias, prolonged post-operative fever, unexplained the fever, persistent drainage of fluid from the abdomen or the pelvic drain. The treatment of this obstructed or ureteral injury is very important. Don't forget these cases. You have to drain the urine collection, you have to put an frostomy tube in the kidney to withdraw the urine or what's called divert the urine from the, from the direction to the injured ureter. Later on, after one month or two months, after the situation is get calm down, you can go for surgery and repair this injury. It is either iatrogenic injury, transurethral section of the bladder tumor, cystoscopic bladder biopsy, transurethral resection of the prostate, cystolithral epoxy, cesarean section, especially an emergency. The blood are very common injured during the cesarean section, especially in cases with multiple previous cesarean, there is adhesion and the surgeon cannot dissect between the gravid uterus and the bladder, and they are called for us many times in cases like this. Penetrating, penetrating trauma to the lower abdomen, Blunt pelvic trauma is associated with, with pelvic fracture, may be associated with bladder trauma. It is either intraperitoneal perforation or extraperitoneal perforation. The peritoneum overlying the bladder has been breached along with the wall of the bladder, allowing urine to escape into the peritoneal cavity. In this situation, by ultrasonography or open by CT, we'll find the urine floating in the peritoneum, needs drain and exploration. Extra vitreal perforation, the retinium is intact and the urine escaped into the space around the bladder, but not only the retinal cavity. If it is big amount, sometimes it is in need for drainage. 